Okay, so now um, we've been studying right triangles. We've learned Pythagorean theorem and special right triangles. Now today we're going to talk about trigonometry and we can use trig to find the missing angles along with the missing sides. So uh, what trig means, it's from Greek, uh, means triangle plus the measure, so it's the measure of a triangle, and it is mostly used with right triangles. So uh, right triangle problem solving. So right triangles with two known sides use Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. So for example, if we have a six and an eight, we do Pythagorean theorem. So we would do six squared plus eight squared and then take the square root of that and we would add because we're looking for the hypotenuse giving us 10. Okay, with this one, using trig, if I give you two sides, guess what? You can find both angles. So using trig, you would be able to find that those two angles were 53 and 37. Now if I give you a side and an angle, you can use trig to find the other two sides. So then you would find that that was 5 and that was 4. So math terms, opposite and adjacent. Think about where you live. So if you live right here in this house, okay? This house would be considered across the street, so it would be opposite. This one would be your neighbor, so they would be adjacent. So these are two terms that we're going to use a lot today. All right, so let's look at angle A, okay? In angle A, so if I were to look at angle A, I'm going to circle the angle, and then I'm going to label the sides. So for example, AB would be the hypotenuse, so I would label it H. Over here is opposite, so I'd label it O. And this one right here is touching, so I would label it A. So that's how you would label, okay? Remember, opposite and adjacent. Now what about angle B? What if I wanted to refer to angle B? Because everything is in reference to an angle. So now if I'm looking at angle B, this is still my hypotenuse because it's always across from the 90. Now this side over here is opposite, ooh, opposite, and now this side is adjacent. So when you switched angles, the label switched. All right, there are three ratios. If you'll know, um, if you'll notice, there are three buttons on your calculator, which you will see when you get to class. Okay, you have sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? So sine would be the sine button on your calculator, cosine is the cosine button on your calculator, and tangent is the tangent button on your calculator. So what is the sine of A? What is the cosine of A? What is the tangent of A? So this is how you set it up, okay? Um, one thing you need to make sure that you write at the top of your page each time Okay, go away, stupid. All right, so we're going to write Sokotoa. So, ka, toa. Okay, S stands for sine, O stands for opposite, H stands for hypotenuse, C stands for cosine, A stands for adjacent, H stands for hypotenuse, T stands for tangent. O stands for opposite, A stands for adjacent. So this helps you remember how to set up your equations. So if I'm looking at angle A, then this is opposite, this is hypotenuse, this is adjacent. So if I want the sine of A, I have to use the opposite and the hypotenuse. Since the opposite is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5, this is your ratio. The cosine of A is the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so it would be 4 over 5. The tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, so it's 3 over 4. So those are your three ratios that you would need to set up for every single problem, and then you would solve. So what about B? So it's the same thing, okay? So you're going to do the same thing, except this time you're going to look at angle B. Okay, so now this is your hypotenuse, now this one is opposite, and this one is adjacent. So the sine of B is 4 over 5, the cosine of B is 3 
over 5 because it uses the a and the h. The tangent of b uses the o and the a, so it's 4 over 3. So we're going to do this in class. Okay, so we'll do this when, when I see you on Thursday. And we're going to do this one in class, so we'll do this one when I see you. Because you'll need to do this on the calculator. So those two will save. All right, so now if we're going to solve for a missing side, okay, we're going to solve for a missing side. So we take, um, we're going to circle our angle, and we're going to label this is opposite, and this is adjacent, okay? So since I have an O and an A, and remember Sokotoa, since I have an O and an A, that means I have to use tangent. So the tangent of my angle equals opposite over adjacent. So just plug in these three things where it's asked in the formula. For example, the angle is 24, so I'll replace A with 24. Opposite is X. The adjacent is 20, so you just plug them in. Now you cross multiply, okay, because really what they're doing is they're putting this over 1. So we're going to cross multiply, so 1 times X is X. And then go this way, and you get 20 times the tangent of 24. When you pipe it in the calculator, you get that x is 8.9. That is all there is to it. All right, so let's try this one, okay? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to circle our angle. I'm going to label this opposite, and I'm going to label this adjacent. I'm not worried about the hypotenuse because I don't know anything about it, so who cares? So now I have the tangent of angle A is opposite over adjacent. So what is A? A is 56. So then we're going to go over here and we're going to slide this over. So now I have the tangent of 56 is X over 3. So we're going to cross multiply. So we cross multiply going this way and then go this way. And then you get your answer, 4.5. Okay, now solve for a side if your denominator is X, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to circle our angle. This is opposite, this is adjacent. So that means the tangent of angle A is opposite over adjacent. So that means the tangent of 35 is opposite over adjacent. So here's this really, really cool trick, okay? When X is in the denominator, so when X is in the denominator, you're going to take the X and you're going to take this whole thing, not just the number, but the whole thing, and they're going to trade places. So X is 10. 10 stays in the top because we didn't move it, divided by the tangent of 35. So when I get the tangent 10 divided by the tangent of 35, then I will get my decimal, which I don't have my paper here. So save this for in class on Thursday and we'll talk about the answer. I'll show you how to type it in the calculator, okay? So X is, and then remind me, in class. All right, next one. Solving for a side with X in the bottom. All right, so again, we're going to take this. This is opposite. This is adjacent. So I've got the tangent of 65 is opposite over adjacent. So these two trade places. So I get X is 50 divided by the tangent of 65. And when we type it in, see where it says switch 65, tan 65 and X. So when I um, type this in my calculator, I will get that the answer is 23.3. Okay, what about when we're looking for a missing angle though? Okay, so you do it exactly the same. You circle your angle, you label your sides, and since we're focusing on tangent today, it kind of makes it a little bit easier to get an understanding. So um, I've got the tangent of y, so this would be the tangent of y is opposite over adjacent. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to move everything around so that I get Basically, you're going to take the tangent and you're going to move it over here. And when you move it over there, you get y equals inverse tangent, which is the second button on your calculator. So you'd press second tangent. So this would be second tangent 
and then you type in your fraction and you get that the angle is 58 degrees. Okay. So do it again. So we're going to circle our angle, label our sides, and then plug it in. The tangent of y is 5 over 12. Take the tangent, move it over here. So you get y equals tangent inverse, 5 over 12. Type it in the calculator and you got your answer. Okay. All right, so I will see you guys on Thursday. Have a good day.